Hello, shiny tubers, and welcome back to Let's Play Shining Force CD Book 2, Battle Number 2, with me, Blue Ankylo. In the last episode, we did a quick recap of the first book and began our, force, our, began our adventure with our second force, a Shining Force led by Natasha the Mage. The Sword of Haya was stolen from Cypress Castle. Most of Cypress' army has gone off to, defeat, to invade Yom. But the evil, um, I guess, de demons or devil lords or whatever they are, are up to no good, probably. So, uh, before we head out, let's, uh, let's see what our characters have to say. Oh, one thing I want to mention before I go with the, the character dialogues. Just remember that this game, although it's got the same engine as Shining Force 2, essentially, being on the Shining, the Sega CD, it's, it's pretty advanced for music and, and gameplay. Like, the, the controls are better than the first game, but... Remember that these are technically remakes of the Gaiden 1 and Gaiden 2 Game Gear games. So whenever we're talking about the size of the maps or the lack of towns or the kind of watered down dialogue or bad translations, mostly you can blame it that these games were designed for a handheld, battery powered system in the early 90s. So um, as much as it's, it's, it's like Shining Force 1 and 2, it's definitely of lower quality. And uh, I, I do enjoy it. Like, I'm not trying to bash the game, but, you know, if you haven't ever played this game before or ever watched one, that's 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 why it's a little different, right? It's originally a Game Gear game. Okay, so let's talk to our folks. Deanna, silent. Natasha, when we work together as a team, I believe we can do anything. Look at my heavy armor. Have you seen a stronger soldier than me? Yes, people with real helmets. My noble blood never allows me to lose. But I can't hold up my head before dawn. Yeah, I like the action on the front line. Really good dialogue. Unlike Jahan, Eric, I can use magic. And that's everybody for now. So we didn't get a whole lot of level ups on our first chapter, uh, our first battle. We'll see what comes up next. Uh, we should make a save, I suppose. At least it uses the correct Shining Force, like, um, music and sound effects. It's, it's got that, it's got that, uh, style down, let's say. Alright, anyway, back to battle number two. Chasing after a thief who has fled. So this time around, we've got huge bats that will, I'm assuming, poison us? Typically, the first bat you run into puts you to sleep, which is terrible, but they have antidotes, so maybe it's more of a poisonous bat. There's a lot of herbs that will drop, I assume, just, you know, looking at these enemies, so... I guess the idea is feel free to use your medical herbs. Uh, I'm gonna try to get in the habit of checking enemy inventories before we get into battle, uh, just to see if there's any rare items, like a power ring or something that we would like to get. Mind you, most of our characters have a lot of inventory space at the moment, it's still easy to miss stuff. So I'm assuming the first few battles will be pretty linear. Not too much strategy to really discuss. Uh, you can see this is, in a, in a good way, this is actually teaching you a little bit about um, train penalties here. Because your, your your knights, your paladins, your centaurs, they can't move on the dirt at all, really. But they can move through the grass really quickly. So, hey, we're learning. That is good game design, where you're not forced into... Um, like, you can kind of learn without being punished for it. Attack two, attack, or HP two, attack one, defense one, quick one. Reasonably good level up. I have done a lot of research into how Shining Force um, one especially, but how the Shining Force series does its level ups. And as much as your stats are not, there are some, let's just say there's some randomness involved in your leveling up. Uh, it's definitely not like Fire Emblem where they're completely independent and every every level up has completely random potential gains. And this has sort of a, um, oh, what would you call it? Uh, there's like a predefined table of your expected stats for every level. Now, that doesn't mean you'll get them, but you'll always with it be within a margin of error close to them. And it will never let you get too far away from your, your stat averages. So it, it tends to be... You know, every time you play the game, you might end up with slightly different character results. But they'll be close. So some, some characters can be straight up better at some stats than others. It's not just totally random. Uh, like, attack two for Eric. That's pretty good. 
Again, I don't know for sure how it works with this, this egg, the Shining Force CD games. I've only really looked into Shining Force 1's um, level up table, and I know they changed it even for Shining Force 2, so. Alright, more MP for our mage. I wonder... It might be worth a strike here to see if I can get Luke a kill. Rather than just healing for 10 XP. Oh, Luke! I mean, 15 experience with no MP cost is probably still okay. But... Yeah, if we don't level him up fairly quick, I can I can see him falling behind. Because he's, he's not going to get enough MP to heal off that. Or to, to gain the level ups off that. And he's not going to do enough damage to kill things. As everyone else is going to get these like, big attack ups and better weapons. And all that jazz. Okay, well, probably going to have a bunch of bats flying towards us now. Let's see. We're a little bit out of their range. Let me keep my mage. I mean, actually, Natasha probably has high enough defense that it's fine. Oh, good. The bat actually did take the bait. That's perfect. I guess we were in range of the scavengers, so that was enough for them all to move in. If only we had Blaze level 2. They're lined up so perfectly for an area of effect spell. Alright, well. Let's keep Deanna out of attacking positions. Eric, let's see. What do we want to kill first? I think we'll go for the, rat, the scavenger first. Even though the bats probably poison you and are more dangerous. I think we'll have an easier time killing the scavenger. Um, probably by the looks of things. Eric is looking like he's having a really good start. Like, uh, 13 and 7. 13 attack, 7 defense versus 17 attack and 6 defense. He does have a level up already, but man, that's a, that's some good stats for a low level knight. I like it. I did select hard, right? Hey, free medical herd. Could have left that for Natasha to get a kill, I suppose. I have a feeling Luke is not going to do very much damage here, but let's see. Oh yeah, remember when I said uh, it, flyers have higher dodge rates? There you go! We're 0 for 1 on hitting a flyer. I suppose that is one of the more significant benefits of having a mage. No, they, they can't be affected by enemy dodge rates. All right, two HP, two attack, and a little bit of quickness. No defense, though, which is strange. Uh, not enough damage to kill the huge bat. You know what we're missing? We don't have an archer. Usually, you start with an archer in these games. All right, Eric. Seven agility to Dawn. Dawn killed something recently. I think I want to kill a bat. If I can prevent the amount of poison we get hit by, I think that would be worth it. Even though Eric is the highest level, I still... I think it's better to get this kill with him still. Level 4. HP 1, attack 2. Alright, he is... Uh, he is quickly becoming one of my most, my most powerful knights I've ever had. Just by virtue of getting all these attack ups early on. So do I want to send her... I think we're going to be choke pointed on the bridge for a while, so I'm going to try to lure one of the enemies towards Dawn. Oh, the bat got out of the way. Well, I had a feeling it would just... I thought it would stay on the bridge and just put... Uh, worst case scenario, would put, like, uh, Jaha to sleep and then we'd never get past it. But anyway, we'll split the forces. We'll split our team up. That, that'll that work great. I trust Dawn. All right. Well, Deanna certainly can do some damage to the bat. I don't think I want to rush. I could attack that scavenger, I was thinking, maybe, but I don't think taking on three enemies at once is a great plan. Oh, this might be a kill for um, if I can get the turn order. Oh, Luke! You're too slow! That would have been a nice kill for him with one HP. Anyway, there's people to heal, so he's got a job. One thing I probably could have done before we started the battle was move some items around to uh, make sure Luke has lots of medical herbs. All right, Eric, you're getting too many level ups here, buddy. I'm going to just see if he can do some damage to the scavenger, because someone else should kill the bat. Okay, that's perfect. Yeah, just do no damage and get no experience. Beautiful. All right, well, Natasha. 
finish off the bat, I suppose. Another antidote. So the bats were not able to poison anyone, so either they can't or we got a little bit lucky. Alright, so this is unfortunate turn order. The Dragon Newt has had two attacks before Dawn got her turn. This is just part of the random turn order. It's based on your agility, but every round of combat, which is, includes every unit's turn, both allies and enemies, uh, the game takes everyone's base agility and it throws it through a formula. It's plus or minus a certain percent. I don't know exactly what the range is, but it's fairly wide. So even if everyone has 10 agility, you'll have different turn orders every every turn. So the Dragon Newt went slow one turn and then quick the next turn, which essentially let it attack twice in a row by the looks of things. But they were separate rounds, if that makes sense. Hopefully I'm explaining it half sensibly. Uh, yeah, this is bad positioning. Shouldn't have, I shouldn't have left Eric on that tile because he's got a range to attack. That was dumb. Uh, let's see, Luke is not going to be able to do any significant damage here. Seven defense. Uh, like, maybe maybe three damage. Who should be... See? Yeah, okay, well... There's a couple people that need healing, and if he gets more than ten experience, he might level up. Come on, get like three MP so you can be more useful next battle. Nope. Don't worry, we'll get Luke to level two this battle at least. I can see it. Alright, Natasha. Well, she's already level 3. I'm not too... Like, I like. I kind of said, like, I want to feed her kills, but... We'll uh, do some damage to the Scavenger. Level 4. She got some good experience there. Two more MP, some attack, some quickness. And the freeze spells. Now she can do a little bit more damage. Oh, uh, Eric. I wish you'd just done your damage the first time. I bet you he'll kill that dragon dude if I attack it. 19 attack. Yeah, he'll do pushing 12 damage. Minus land effect, but they're on a bridge which... I don't think has any land effect at all. I think it's neutral. I'm just gonna let someone else get these kills, I think. I'll block the road down here, but... Yeah, I think it's more important for Dawn to get to level 3 than it is for Eric to... Like, we, we do get reduced experience as you get to higher levels fighting the same enemies. Maybe even that'll be enough damage for Luke, our healer, to get a kill. Plus, the Dragon Newt's out of MP, so... Yeah, I mean, we could have killed him already, but I, I think this is worth it. Having your highest level characters sort of steal experience by always getting the kills, uh, it, it just keeps your lower level characters further behind, and then they don't catch up easily. HP 1, defense 2, and quickness 1, but no no HP, right? Only at attack, right? Did I, I said it wrong, but still base attack. Alright, come on, Luke. Take this Newt down. I think I said he could do 3 damage. Yes! Alright, that's a very good win for our... Oh, 3 attack! Yeah, maybe he's gonna be like Kray. Kray had a lot of physical attack power, too. Not a very good healer, but... If he can get if he can get level ups like that, he will catch up real quickly. Like he's already doing the same damage as Dawn with one good level up. Crazy. All right, let's move on. Not too much more over here. They have to move through the tall grass, which will slow them down a fair bit. So I can I can push forward a little bit aggressively here. Although the tall grass will probably provide. Um, trying to say. It'll probably provide them, like, 30% uh, terrain effect. Now, in, in Shining Force 2, at least, most of the time, your terrain effect, which only applies to land units, not flyers, it, um, it reduces the damage taken. Not, not your attack power while attacking, but after the damage calculation, you know, attack minus defense. It took that value and then um, reduced it by 30%. At least that was the idea. I, I don't know if the math ever 100% checked out. There's probably some weird rounding errors, but... Oh, yeah, right. He does lots of damage. That was kind of a mistake. Oh, well. He got 49 experience. Goblins must be a lot higher level than I was thinking. In Shining Force 1, goblins were only, like... 
maybe level two or three before you started losing out. Like you did not get 49 experience for killing them once you were level three or four. I'm pretty sure anyway. There's kind of a hidden enemy level that the game doesn't really tell you. And as you match and exceed it, you'll get reduced experience for, um, for fighting them or killing them. I think the way you can determine it is if you get 49 or 50 experience for a kill, then the enemy is still the same level as you or lower, basically. But if you're getting less than 49 experience for killing them, then uh, you've probably overleveled a little bit. Depends on the enemy. Sometimes it's hard to say for sure. Anyway, the fact that the goblin gave 49 experience at level 4 seems to suggest we could level up a lot here. If you wanted to egress and come back, kind of thing. Hey, Natasha can get in range. So we do have a freeze spell, so that's kind of nice. She starts with freeze, blaze, and freeze. I generally consider freeze to be superior. It costs a little bit more, but... Um, at level 3, freeze gets range 3 rather than range 2. Well, that was weird. And range 3 spells are just much easier to get away with. Like, you can keep your mages safer and attack from further away. It's, it's pretty good. And the level 4 freeze, which we'll probably never get ever, uh, similarly, you know, I'm not going to attack with, with Eric. He's already level 4. Luke can't do anything. I need to give him some more herbs. Jaha could get the kill, or Dawn could get the kill. Jaha would get a level up, so I'm going to let, I'm going to try to let Jaha do it. All right, Jaha, don't, don't let me down. I don't know. I didn't check if he could do six damage, but yeah, <laughs> seven even. HP, attack, quickness one. He still has not had any defense ups. Not impressed. Well done, everyone, but we've lost the thief. We must retrieve the sword of Haya no matter what. So, if, in case you're wondering, I do prefer to spread my experience and levels out evenly. That's that's generally my preference. The Thames Village is just ahead. We can gather some information there. Hey, a town. Too bad we can't explore it. So this is the Thames Village. Let's question the villagers. We may find a clue to the thief's whereabouts. Deanna, come with me. Mmm, weapon shop. Excuse me, I'd like to ask a few questions. Sure, come on in. We have some great merchandise. Uh, no thanks. We'll come again. Thanks for stopping by. Seriously, buy something. I need swords. I always need swords. Well, that was interesting. He, he, you didn't ask him anything. He just tried to sell you some weapons. She's a terrible, like, search, whatever you want to call it. Investigator. Detective. Wait, where is everybody? Remember when you could check barrels for secret items? Those were the days. I don't see anyone. Nice little fields over there, though. There's no one here either. This is strange. Hey, wait! What are you running from? What are you running away for? Uh, I'll be placing the villagers' lives in danger if I talk to you. Have Yom soldiers just invaded your village? Uh, please, I must go. The villagers are being held captive. That's why we can't see anyone. They'll release the villagers in exchange for the Sword of Halia. Listen! Hey! Do you honestly believe they'll keep their promise? It's the only chance I have to save them. Well, there's actually another way. Join us and we can defeat them together. Besides, we need a healer. I believe that together we can save my people. I'll join with you in this worthy cause. Slade, the rat, I mean, priest has joined the force. Sadly, he will not become a ninja, a ninja thief. Look, there's Graham with the Sword of Haya. He's heading for Albert Cliffs, let's go. Can I go shopping first, please, game? One thing this game doesn't really do very often is like, oh, it does, I take it back. In the first book, it doesn't send you to the shop very often. Typically, you have to egress to even find the shops because they're, they're sort of hidden. Anyway, we've got a new character. Let's have a quick look. 
We're going to say hello to Slade. I will add his slides for the next episode. He is a priest. You're more probably your more traditional healer with more MP and better healing spells. So we'll see how it turns out. Luke maybe will be more of a physical combat with some healing. And maybe Slade will be our regular healer, kind of the way uh, Mayfair was in Book 1. We should at least talk to him for a second as we get people. I'm too old to stand in the front line, but I'll be right behind you if you need me. All right. Thanks, old man. More importantly, is there any cool weapons we can buy? Ah, uh, let's see. Better slants. Probably better arrow. Lots of healing items. We definitely want to stock up. We don't have any archers, though. That's right. There's no... Like, normally you start with a wooden arrow, but there's no archers. Um... Did we start with a short sword or a middle sword? I don't remember. We started with a short sword. All right. Deanna powers up. Bronze Lance. Hopefully I have enough money for all this. Dawn definitely needs the upgrade to weapon power. Although we often... Like, I'm not going to sell the spear because it's nice to have that two range. But um, the, the higher damage can be useful in a pinch. Too much, too much inventory. Hand axe. It's better than a short axe. And the glove, I assume we started with that. Yeah, same glove. So I need to buy one more lance. I probably have a bronze rod. Slade has one. It's better than a wooden stick, but it's also kind of a waste of money because your mages generally don't smack things very much. All right, so let's uh, clean up. I guess we can check the deals before we go. I want to buy some herbs for people, and I'll want to buy... Uh, the lats for uh, Eric, who's turning out really good early game. We're gonna, yeah, like I said, we're gonna hold on to the bronze lance for higher range one attack, and then keep the spear for the ability to do range two attacks. All right, deals. Yeah, in book one, I don't think there was ever a deal that popped up unless you sold an item that was rare, basically. So my priority will be making sure my healers have. Probably at least two medical herbs each, so that early game with their low, um, their low MP pools, we can, we can, um, what am I trying to say? We, we can, we can get them more experience. If anyone else uses a medical herb, they get one experience, but if a healer uses a medical herb, they'll get ten experience, which is, well, it's not as good as killing something, but hey, you know, right? It's better than nothing. There, I don't think there's going to be a storage either, like Shining Force 2, where you could put things in the convoy sort of thing. So, uh, you, you've only got the, spa the, the, the inventory you've got. Like the, it, the, the four slots on each character, counting their weapons. And it doesn't even let you, like, equip a weapon and have a weapon outside of your four inventory. The, the equipped weapon takes up a slot as well, like Shining Force 1. So, we don't really have enough money to buy the seeds yet. Uh, if I remember correctly... Um, herbs are 10 HP healed and seeds are uh, 20, which is better, but we also don't really need it yet. My my default is to generally keep one healing item on most characters um, and then max out inventory for my healers so they can spam them more often. And then if we, if we have a really long battle, then people could actually give their extra herbs to the healers and have them continue healing later on, basically. Probably try to heal every turn where possible. Unless there's a juicy target to attack. So that's everybody with healing item. We've got a couple spare antidotes, which I'll probably get rid of eventually, because uh, you don't get poisoned that often, and I'm sure we'll learn a detox spell soon enough. Yeah, there you go, that's, that's our inventory manage. The only thing we didn't buy was an extra bronze rod, which technically I can afford, so okay. Who knows? Maybe I will even use it once. It's it's pretty unlikely, but it's possible we'll smack something with Natasha. All right. Well, there we go. Everyone's level three or four except our healer. And uh, I'm feeling pretty good. Nothing's been super difficult so far. So we'll end our episode here after a quick save. And I will see you guys next episode. Got to remember to add Slade. And we will do battle number three. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed. And see you next time.